Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm your host, So Not The Hero Type, and this is another How To RB1 short. And today we're gonna to be talking about science. And more importantly, things you can do to kind of find out how to farm science and kind of how to work your way through the tech tree. Now, one of the biggest things you need to understand is those bigger nodes, those are, I call them stepping nodes, and those are required to unlock everything that connects below it. So for example, if I want to do the advanced avionics or advanced science, I have to unlock the electronics tab, which is a little lightning bolt tab right there. That's something you're going to want to watch out for because some of those don't actually give you anything and sometimes upgrading them actually upgrades certain parts you already have. But we're going to back up a bit and we're going to go from the last episode and I'm going to show you kind of how I start picking my tech tree stuff. So this is starting off from where I did my suborbital launch and got all that science. One of the main focuses is this material science tab so you can unlock the better rocketry tab. You want to go a little heavy in the rocketry early on just to kind of get the tech moving and make sure to grab avionics and science. Now if you're going to be doing planes up at the top there are other plane tabs and I'm just going to kind of spend all the science I can trying to get orbital rocketry unlocked. I need a major tab here still before I can unlock it which is totally possible to do. We have some science left over, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the next plane tab. Now, because of this, we have a pretty big Q setup, which is why I recommend going a little heavy in R&D once you get to like the next 1953 year era. That way you can kind of get everything rolling. We're gonna switch over to a different screen real fast because I wanna show you how to see what science you haven't gained yet in case you're trying to farm a certain amount. Now down in the right bottom corner next to your Delta V readouts, there's going to be two MechJeb tabs. The one on the left will open up this menu. Now this will show you all of the experiments possible, and you can even filter it down to what's currently on your craft if you want to make changes that way. Now let me go ahead and find one that actually has science on it real quick so I can explain how this works to you. And we're going to go ahead and pause it, I'm going to kind of show you like up close and personal. Now the best way to explain this is those two little blank lines mean there's no science gainable. And then you have the R&D, the flight, and the value. R&D is what you've already gained, value is what's left to gain. Now the completed amount, the 0.8x, means you have 80% of that total science earned. So let's say you need to get like two more science points to get the next tab unlocked. It's good to come check this out, that way you can see what experiments can still get you science versus what can't. Now on the right side is a box Box that shows you the duration, the bit rate, as well as the charge, and what situations it can be done in. So biome specific can give you, let's say it gives you 10 science, it can give you 10 science each biome, so on and so forth. When you get the biome ones, you'll typically see multiple lines under like flying low, for example, because each biome has so much science to be gained, and you can see what percentage of what biome you've already gotten. This way you know which experiments you still need to do, so you don't overload a craft with experiments that won't give you any gain, waste mass, and funds. Let's go ahead and move on to the next part. Now you can see a lot of this information also when you right click the experiments up in the tab here. Uh, keep in mind there are actually two biological sample units and they, they don't give you anything different. They're the same sample unit. But you can scroll through here and see kind of the dependencies and how it works and how much science it can gain, how long it takes, etc. It also shows you if it's like biome specific or just flying high, flying low, and other information like that. Now there's also two types of experiments, transmittable experiments and recovering experiments. Certain ones you have to recover them to actually get the scientific gain. Now if you're not using Kerbalism, none of that actually matters and you can transmit most things, but I'm going to assume you have Kerbalism installed. So we're going to hop over to the R&D building again so I can kind of explain to you what I mean by that. Now for an example, we're going to use one of my least favorite experiments, the big camera. Now you're going to notice that it has a sample size and not a bit rate. Let me zoom in real quick. So this has a sample size of one slot or a capacity of one slot, which means you have to recover the data from this experiment by bringing it back down and recovering it like you'd normally recover a ship. Now on the other side of that is science that actually transmit over time. Let me zoom into one of those. Now this one has a data rate, which means it can transfer data as long as you have a connection to somewhere on Earth. So these will gradually give you science over time, comparative to the ones where you have to actually return them back down to Earth and recover them. So make sure you check this out before trying to put an experiment on something that you can't bring back down because you're just kind of wasting space at that point. 
Now you have all kinds of scientific stuff down here in these lower tabs, so try to get those as soon as you can just to keep the science rolling, but you do need to pick a focus point, which we're going to go over a little bit later. Now the reason why I don't like that big camera unit is because it is a pain in the butt to get the sample back down to earth. You have to use a special type of return capsule because it's pretty much impossible to bring that camera back down without it blowing up. Which means you need to unlock re-entry stuff which is up above here, I'll kind of show you that real fast. Now this is the re-entry module stuff and you can actually put sample containers in these units and then return them to earth and recover them and that's how you get that data. I'm making that sound a lot easier than it actually is because these things like to fight. In fact, I'm going to be making an entire short on just recovering that big camera stuff because it's just one of those really infuriating things and it's worth a lot of science. Now let's go ahead and talk focus points. So you're gonna come to a part in the game where you can either do a human space flight or interplanetary flight. I prefer to go human space flight, but I will leave that one up to you. The reason I say you have to make a choice is because until you pick one of those things, there's just not enough science points to do both of them at the same time. Both have their own merits for what they can do, but human space flight's more of an immediate return, why it takes time to go interplanetary, so it's best to stick with one and then move on to the next once you kind of get the science. Now there's a few other things I want to talk about while we're in the R&D tab, and these are things where you have to actually buy them in the R&D building. I'm going to zoom in again on a, an example to kind of show you what I mean. Now these are radar upgrade dishes, so once you unlock a certain level of communications, you have to update your tracking station and purchase the discs, or you won't actually get the extra distance and contact. There's a few upgrade parts as well that you have to do that with and I'm going to go more in depth on this because I'm going to do a little short on upgrading your KSC but I just kind of wanted to point that out why we are in this particular screen. Something else to keep in mind is you can actually preview the cost of a new part inside the screen as you're researching it because yes you actually have to purchase the part in order to use it. Always keep that in mind when you're building a new launch vehicle because if you need to purchase a new engine that's going to be expensive you better make sure you have the funding for it before you buy that engine. And I can literally talk about money management for like 40 minutes so we're going to move past this and I want to talk about limitations of your R&D building based off its upgrades. Now we're in the basic capsules tab. These, this requires 50 points of science. So we couldn't research this even if we had the science and we had all the tech before it because our R&D building has not been upgraded. Now this brings me to my final point. You have to update your R&D building at a certain point to keep moving forward on the tech tree and it does cost about a quarter million dollars to do so. Let me go ahead and explain to you how all of this works. Now when you right click on it and highlight the upgrade, it'll actually show you the changes it makes. So we can do science up to 50 after this upgrade, which is what basic capsules is. And it also gives us a 25% boost to our tech, which will make these actually research faster. So you get some benefit from it. Now, this is going to be something you'll have to purchase a little bit later because a quarter million funds this early in the game is a lot. But if you look over here when we get up to like basic capsules, it'll say you cannot research technology over 20 points. That's because we have not updated our R&D building. So once you update it, these will become available to you. Now also keep in mind, when you have this clicked, there'll be these little blue, light blue lines up in the top right corner. Those tell you what tabs you need to unlock before you can do that particular one. Pretty much all of the tech tree tabs show you this and mostly the most important ones. But at 50 science, you can unlock basically everything down the center here, which is actually quite a lot. So you don't have to upgrade the R&D building as much as you think. I want to say there's three or four total upgrades. Don't quote me on that because I, I just can't think of it right now. All that being said, I encourage you to explore this screen just so you can kind of see where everything's at. And that's going to pretty much wrap up this short so thanks again for stopping by i hope you guys enjoyed and at least learned something if you like the video give it a like if you want to see more feel free to subscribe i have been your host stone the hero type and i hope i see you next time for more how to rp1 shorts mm -hmm.